Hey YouTubers, what's that fantastic view here in uh, San Antonio, Texas. I'm outside the Stinson Municipal Airport. It was established in 1916 uh, down on the south side of San Antonio. I'm going to be going to the museum here. But uh, before I go there, just showing you the outside of the main building. There's You can tell there's been some add-ons. And then it's got a municipal map here. I'll be going over right now. I'm right here. Where stars at but I'll be driving over to number four there to look at the Texas Air Museum that they have here they have a small air museum I'll go ahead and go in there but again this is on uh, 8535 across the street here Mission Road. Uh, as you gather by the name Mission Road, the missions also connect here. Kind of sunny here, but the Stinson Airport, established by a Stinson family of aviation pioneers, Stinson Airport, it was witnessed the history of aviation from barstormers to jets. Alabama native Catherine Stinson, 1891-1977, hoped to win prize money to finance her musical education. Convinced famed flight instructor Max Lilly of Chicago to take her on a student in 1912. She became the fourth licensed woman pilot in the U.S. and began touring as a stunt pilot. Her family, mother Emma, sister Marjorie, and brothers Eddie and Jack established a Stinson Aviation Company in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Marjorie and Eddie trained at the Wright Flying School in Ohio and also became pilots. In 1913, Max Lilly encouraged the Stinson move to San Antonio, where the Army had granted him permission to use the parade ground at Fort Sam Houston. Soon, Captain and Marjorie were offered instruction to U.S. and Canadian military pilots. The family leased 500 acres at the site from the city in 1916 and established a Stinson Field. After the ban of civilian flights during World War I, Stinson Field became the city's civil airport in 1918. Charles Lindbergh kept an airplane and flew out of Stinson while he was stationed at Brooks Field. In the 1930s, commercial airlines began using the airport in construction of a new terminal building with works progress. Marriage administration funds enhanced the facility. During World War II, it once again became an Army Corps training facility returned to civilian use after the war. Stinson Field became the primary general aviation airport for the city of San Antonio up to that time. Pretty interesting. Stinson Field Admin Building. And then it's got the Works Progress Administration 1935-1937. Captain Stinson, circa 1916. It's a history. So inside the terminal, they have some old pictures. And from here, I can see where the museum is. There's a newer tower over there across the runways. First building in Stinson Fuel. Nineteen thirty-six. Welcome visiting ships on top of that building. Hey YouTubers, on the opposite side of uh, the entrance and the main location for the Stinson Airport, one of the hangars, which is hangar number 17, is the Texas Air Museum. It's on 99th Street here in San Antonio, Texas. Here's the Texas Air Museum, San Antonio, Texas, Stinson Field Traffic. We're going to do a walking tour of this while I'm down here. Yeah, pretty good. Just gonna walk around. Thank you, thank you. Are you with the stewardess here right now? Oh, no, no. Okay, it's just with you? Yeah. Alright, let me sign you 
Got some info on the dude already. Info at the ski gear crewman. Captain Roger Williams. Originally from Octumwa, Iowa. Operation Little Vehicles. This part of the Berlin airlift here is showing. We're two prisoners of war exhibit. Got different uniforms here. This guy is Horace Clyde Basley, 9th volunteer at Lafayette Escadillo, World War I. The only pilot in Escadillo from San Antonio, Texas. So the volunteer Americans that flew for the French in World War I. A lot of World War I items here. And that you Sergeant W.N. Reynolds, God, that uniform looks so small. People were smaller. Hmm. Wow, look at names here. Gunner's mate, Master Chief. This is uh, Bessie Coleman standing in front of the nose of the Curtis Jenny. She dressed in some type of flying uniform. Coleman was the first licensed black pilot in 1922. She received her license in France. Coleman died in a plane crash in 1926 near Jacksonville, Florida. Here's the Stinsons that the airport helped establish. The Stinson Airport. British helmet, French World War II helmet, French Cappy, East German Cap, East German helmet, helmets of the Blitz. Even the helmets look small. Military Piff, Alfred's Peak and Cap. Yes, Air Force 1950s. So. They do have a lot of uniforms in here. Texas Air National Guard. Swedish army. We'll go up to the planes here. Brooks Air Force Base. Should be a leader. A country as rich and powerful as this, which has so many burdens and responsibilities, which has so many opportunities. Yes, Ramin. Contra Villa there. The raids. Oh, and it's got the Azteca's Aguilas. 
Let's get their what their symbol looked like on their wings with the diamond. Or sorry, not the diamond, the triangle pattern. But this was the one Mexican Air unit that fought in World War II, and they fought out of a, they were flying out of the Luzon, Philippines. El Escuadrón dos os uno de la Fuerza Aérea Expedición Mexicana de la Segunda Guerra Mundial. They were called the Aztec Eagles, las Águilas Aztecas. They had 42 officers and 247 enlisted men. The Mexican trainee ran in Laredo, from which they proceeded to Randolph and San Antonio for processing. They flew missions in support of the Philipp in the Philippines for ground forces. They flew 31 missions, June 1945 to 25th June. 31 missions during this period. 1,461 times 1,000 pound bombs were dropped and 113,000 rounds of 50 caliber engines were spent in total. 232 sorties through July in Luzon, later over Formosa. So again, there were other countries that were involved in World War II you don't really learn too much about. And I know Brazil was involved at some key parts. This has a lot of good information. Take your time and walk through. Their forces were located during World War II, it looks like. The Filing Tigers, the volunteer group that flew in uh, China during 1941-1942. These are flying aces of World War II. I used to have to get five or more aerial kills. Okay. Get into the plane. All right. Children are welcome to get in it after we go and see the outside exhibit. Okay. Oh, I'll start here. I was going to go the other way. The group went outside already. But this is a 1915 photograph. Jackson Smith shown with the new owner, Claude J. Marty. Claude J. Marty Sr. bought this airplane from Catherine Stinson. The price was one city lot, one Chalmers automobile, an unknown amount of cash. So they have a lot of very old planes here. This is a Curtis Model D. Entered testing at Fort Sam Houston in April 1911 before being removed from service in 1914. Curtis pushes were also used by some of Pancho Villa's mercenary pilots. Philip Ray and Christofferson jockey for position fired their pistols at each other over Mexico in 1913 in what is thought to be the world's first aerial dog flight. This is a Curtis Pusher. Nineteen fourteen, the Viestas used this.
There's an Avro, I don't know if you can see it there. Just some of the flying machine diagram. This is a 1910 Avro in front of us. Design built the original triplane, built four models, Mark 1, 4. The Mark 4 was used as a trainer at Brooklands Airfield in England. Is wrecked several times. Hmm. The original had a wingspan of 32 feet. This is from Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> I think it was Aerobat Aircraft. Experimental aircraft built in 1940 at Brownsville, Texas by Mr. Ellis Eichmann, undergoing restoration. This photograph of Mr. Eichmann, or Miss Eichmann, Mr. and Miss Eichmann was taken in 1942. That background is a modified version of the Aerobat. The Eichmanns reside in Fredericksburg, Texas. This photograph was taken in 1942 at the Brownsville Airport in front of hangar number two. Huh. Like some of the munitions. So right there's a rocket, a German rocket. I'll probably go on that side and see more about it and stuff. This is a half scale model of a monoplane, 1912 Blackburn monoplane. So there's a German World War One aircraft. He's got his uh, tally there, three British, four French, three Snoopies, and two Oops. So he's got two of his own accidentally. And I guess the Snoopies might be American. Here's another view of it. Albatross. Nineteen twenty eight Waco. Used for barnstorming. Looks like a crop duster. Which most crop dusters were. Barnstorming planes. The mailbox. The 1943 Fairchild on the other side. They take donations so they can help fix some of these up. Some more planes they're working on. B-29 main landing gear wheels. Army Air Corps. Yeah. Yeah. They got a lot of parts in here. World War II German aerial camera. So that's what this is. This is this is a Pfizer Fi 103R V1 manned rocket at Reichland test site 1944. The, pi the test pilot is Hannah Rice, and that's her right there. This pilot version of the F-103 codename Wright Schenberger was heavily promoted by flu captain Hannah Rice.
piloted trails began at Lars in September 1944. Hannah Rice made one of the early flights, and it's a picture of her. Probably Whitney powered aircraft engine for a B-36, KC-97, XC-99, and C-119. You see a little boy with long hair? No, sorry. Don't Not away. <laughs> this is a B-29 remote gun trainer. Let me go over here real quick. Guard station. This is a 20 millimeter gun turn for a B 36 bomber. We're gonna, we're gonna look outside. Okay. It's a B 36 Volti. I'm going to nose art off of B-17 Flying Fortress. Green Pern Gertie is a nose art that Air Combat Cruiser Awards so will use to name the aircraft. The right side panel is from an actual B-17 Navigator's cheek turn gun section as seen in the photo. U.S. Navy. We got Felix the Cat. Stop started. B twenty nine engine column. Some more uniforms. Let me run outside real quick. So I'm doing it the opposite Fridays at the before eight. Got a quasin hut here. They got some airplane static displays outside also. In different stages. Again, they have an entry fee here, um, and then they have. <laughs> I think somebody's being funny with that. I love New York thing, but um, they have also uh, on the other side where they're rebuilding some of these or getting them ready again. They have a donation, a donation uh, box set up. This one looks in pretty good condition compared to the other two. And it looks like at night they lit up. And then got a Navy helicopter here.
So again, this is uh, just on the opposite side of Stinson Airport over there. This is the back side of the airport. This is Hangar 17. They have a Texas Air Museum with some of the... Some planes, some older planes um, from pre-World War One era. Again, it's kind of funny. I love New York there. They have other planes inside, older planes. Um, a lot of uniforms, a lot of history. Uh, different uniforms. Some good history. Go back into the closet, huh? It would be a wheelchair would probably be better. Again, we're headed out here. Picture of Mr. Benavides. Medal of Honor winner. You're in Vietnam. Alright, let me go through here real quick. Eighteen seventy seven, the first passenger train arrived in San Antonio. Lights in the air. Again, here's the hours operation and the prices. Get it out. If anybody's into cemeteries, right across is one of the bigger cemeteries in San Antonio, down on the side side. Hope you guys enjoyed this video here at the Texas Air Museum in the south side of San Antonio, right across from the Stinson Airport over there. Um, it was a good little walkthrough, had a lot of good memorabilia from World War One, World War II, um, a lot of planes from pre-World War One era, um, the early days of uh, aviation, some good history about a lot of different people, um, squadrons and all that in there, including the, the Aztec Eagle Squadron from Mexico that fought in World War II, a uh, little known history that most people don't know about and how other countries have supported uh, World War II, you know, you hear about the main superpowers during them, but you don't hear too much of the other countries that did participate um if you guys like this video here go and like share subscribe have a good day enjoy your week with family friends and uh, this is a good little area again if you just don't want to be in the crowds of downtown san antonio the riverwalk area a uh, little hidden gem away from everything else i would recommend coming and uh, taking the tour adios